I have a photography and videography business, and here are some of the most common questions that I get from new photographers, new videographers that are always like, hey, you get all these cool opportunities, and it seems like you're making all this money, and you're, you know, you're, you're like hitting the gas, and you're going 100, and, and you're doing all these cool, exciting things. Um, I compiled a short list. I just want to share with you guys uh, what my thoughts are, and so let's just dive into it. So the question is, is how can I consistently attract new clients and grow my business while standing out in a competitive market? If you are not showing your work, I've, I've said that so many times in so many videos, if you're not sharing or showing your work anywhere, then you're making a vital mistake, especially if you're not marketing yourself as a photographer or videographer that is actually seeking work or looking for work. And I'm going to give you just a quick example of what I told my little brother because he was having the same issue. He owns a camera, but like he just wasn't making money with it. Here are a few things that you can do. So the first one is obvious. Just go take photos of whatever it is you like to photograph, whether it's cars, people, buildings, street photography, it doesn't matter. Anything that you photograph, make sure you're posting it on your story. That's a given. I don't need to tell you that. That's so obvious. If you know how to uh, cut videos, go ahead and create reels. Reels is always going to bring in more traction. It's going to bring in a bigger audience. It's going to bring people to your channel that has... Um, interests or to your social media page in this instance. But that's not really going to produce inquiries, right? Like you're, you're not going to get people really commenting or um, DMing you right away and saying, oh my gosh, like this is cool. Can I hire you? That just doesn't really happen that way. The best way to let people know that you are available and that you want to make money with your camera is going on your Instagram story. I'm going to make this very Instagram specific because I feel like that's where a lot of the business comes from. Go onto your story, just post a photo of something that you took with your camera and with text, you're going to put, Hey, I'm available this weekend. Does anybody want to do portraits? Does anybody need anything shot? Um, can do photography, can do videography, uh, shoot me a DM. You're going to put that in text in your story and you're going to do that a few times. What I told my little brother was exactly that. And I told him, I said, dude, just post something on your story, throw some text on there, let people know that you're available. Um, you don't have to list your prices even. You can just literally just write uh, that you're looking for work, that you're willing to help anybody with any budget, send me a DM and I remember probably that same day or the next day, he had a DJ approach him and ask him if he could come uh, shoot one of the shows, edit him a couple reels. And I think my brother quoted him like $400. It was like this amazing deal, uh, considering that it was travel, shooting, editing, all that stuff. But the point is, is my little brother made $400 from literally throwing away the, the pride and the ego and just being humble enough, enough to say on his story, hey, I'm available. Is Are there any takers? Does anybody need any help with anything? Doing that consistently on your IG story is going to bring people in. And sometimes, you know, it's going to fetch just the average consumer, maybe like the person that wants to just go take photos in an alleyway or in the mountains or in like, uh, I don't know, a, a field somewhere. And, and then you control the pricing and you can tell them exactly uh, what you would charge them. You could price a consumer different from a business, right? If you have like a business inqu inquiring or somebody that you know that might own several businesses uh, because another client that he got that way was a chiropractor. Um, it was basically a referral. Like somebody had seen that post and said, hey, I actually know a chiropractor that needs help with um, – filming and editing reels and, you know, talk to him. And I know that's another client that my brother added that is basically like a retainer client. And my brother goes and charges him several hours of work. And that's like more money that he's making, um, on a Friday or like a Saturday, uh, monthly. So if you are a photographer or a videographer, content creator, like whatever it is that you are, and you're just sitting there with your thumbs in your pocket 
and you maybe think that you're too cool to post on IG stories and get some business, then I don't know what to tell you. But that is a great way to attract new business. Aside from like doing, you know, ads and uh, really being specific in that way, literally just go on your story and say, hey, does anybody need help? I have a camera. I'll give you a good deal. You will find some people. Um, let's say, so the next question is, what's the best way to market my services? So in the beginning, it's just that. Go to your social media, stop being, like stop thinking you're so cool and that you can't throw yourself out there. Stop thinking that you have to post like all these, you know, how the celebrities and the influencers do and they don't interact and they don't comment and, you know, to anything and they're just so cool. Like, shut up. You you have 400 followers, like, you can throw yourself out there and and be weird and, and make some money. Let's see. How do I price my packages to be competitive yet uh, pro- competitive yet profitable? So, what I tell every single client or every single person that I'm going to work with is, I tell them, um, I just say, hey, I will work within your budget. I'll usually ask first what their budget is because everyone's budget is going to be different. If somebody throws me like a really low budget, you know, like let's say somebody wants photos of their dog and, you know, you you don't know them and it's going to require you to go on a Saturday, be there for, you know, two hours, uh, maybe the driving distance, like all of these things are factors, the kind of photos they want, how many photos they want, all those things. If someone's like, oh, well, I can pay like 125, I'd probably say, hey, you know what, let's you know, realistically for like the travel, the work that we're doing, the editing, I'm going to have to come back and go through the photos. It, it sounds like you're going to want, you know, between 20 to 30 photos. I kind of mark it up, you know, $350, right? So that for a consumer is, is absolutely doable. Sometimes they might come back and say, hey, I want to do a little bit less. Uh, but uh, everything is literally case by case. Uh, it's different for realtors. It's different for regular consumers. It's different for businesses. It's different for events. Um, I mean, it, it's it's you don't have to quote everything the exact same. Uh, don't make the mistake of doing that in the beginning because you're gonna uh, kind of corner yourself and and you're not gonna make a lot of money. Um, Try to have a conversation. If it's an event that's like eight hours long and I got to cut a video and I've got to, you know, send all these raw files over, um, you know, then all of a sudden we're probably in like that $1,200 to $2,000 range, uh, maybe even more sometimes depending on the work, right? Uh, But also you want to know who your client is. Um, I recently did a shoot with uh, Raising Cane's like the – the, the 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 food, the chicken place or whatever. And they wanted me there for a few hours. They wanted me to take some photos. I knew it was going to be marketed everywhere. And so I kind of boosted that up. Plus they have a bigger budget, right? And also urgency. They didn't have a photographer and they needed somebody like that weekend. And it was referred to me. So always just kind of, you know, be moldable and know uh, what you're getting into and how much work it's actually going to be. And then make sure that you're always quoting um, something that's going to be you know worth it to you in the end because you're the one that's going to be doing all the work. How do I build a strong personal or business brand? Um, you got to tell everybody what you are. That's like rule number, I don't know, two, I, I guess. You have to be unapologetically, I was going to say cringe, but it's not cringe. You just have to be unapologetically confident in what it is that you want to be and where it is that you want to go. If you can't confidently tell people that you're a photographer or a videographer or a content creator, a YouTube video marketer, if you can't tell people confidently that that is what you are or that is what you want to be, then they're not going to believe you. And that's like really the the first step in anything is you have to tell people what you are, what you can do, uh, what you're passionate about. And it, it, it blows my mind how many people won't do that. And they'll have like a photography page and then they'll just kind of bitch and complain about not making any money. But they're 
so afraid to like really just give themselves that title. There's no one out there gatekeeping the freaking title of whatever it is that you want to be. If you, you know, if you're not, if you think you're not a good photographer, it doesn't matter. Throw photographer in your bio. If you're a videographer and you can video and maybe you're doing stuff on a cell phone or a GoPro, it doesn't matter. As long as you can produce something cool and just give it to somebody in exchange for money, you, you, that's, that's what you are. Don't be afraid to slap a title on yourself and just own it. Back in 2020, when I started with cameras, I really had no idea uh, what I was doing, but I could confidently tell people that at the time I wanted to be a photographer, a videographer. Hey, let's work together. Hey, I'm brand new. I'm not going to charge these crazy, ridiculous prices for the time being um, because I want the experience, but hey, I'm going to give you a good product. I'm going to give you my best. And boom, here I am five years later. It didn't even take five years. It took like one year to get cool jobs, work with cool brands, work with leagues like sports leagues, all these incredible things. It feels like I've lived five different lives all because I told people that I wanted to be a content creator. Um, I got to shoot so many freaking cool things. I made so much money, not only at my like nine to five job, but like just with clients and opportunities and being flown to places. It's crazy what can happen when you just say uh, what it is that you want to be like. You don't you don't have to you don't have to really prove yourself like just take on a little bit of work and just start showing it and tell people what it is that you want to do and to give you a shot. And eventually uh, you're going to build a reputation. You're going to build a network I don't even really have to market myself that much anyway uh, right now because people just hit me up and they just say, hey, can you do this? Or, hey, uh, I spoke to so-and-so and they need a videographer or, you know, this other person wants to start YouTube and they don't know and can you help them? And sure, yeah, I can help them for a price. Um, so, you know, my, my life is r way better than it's ever been because I was willing to just tell people what the heck I did. And if, if you can't do that, then I'm sorry, I've got bad news for you. You're probably just going to own a really cool camera, but you're never going to make a cent or a dollar. Um, you got to tell people what it is that you do as much as you can, because when you're not in the same room and they're talking about you elsewhere and they say, oh yeah, oh dude, my buddy, dude, oh, my buddy Andy, yeah, he, dude, he, he does videos. You need someone who does, oh, let me talk to him. Um, you'd be surprised like it, that that's how the ball gets rolling. That's how you get these cool, uh, connections, networking, and then ultimately it's just paychecks and it's money in your account. What's the best way to balance creative work with running the business side of things? Um, that's a good question. Um, so I have my videography business and, and, you know, work is work at the end of the day when you got to go shoot for somebody whether it's in your own state, maybe it's for a brand, a business, or maybe you go somewhere else, uh, like a different state or a different city. Um, those things are work. And no matter what it is, it's always going to be a little bit uh, draining because you're going to feel the pressure of delivering a good product. You're going to feel the pressure of the travel, staying, uh, you know, the money spent on food, all these things, all these expenses um, but we all, you know, we all wanted to do photography or videography or like YouTube content creation or content marketing because we loved the craft and we loved the artwork, right? So the way that I balance it is by doing this is by having this YouTube video that's for me, that's ultimately going to pay off for me in the future, it's starting to pay off now, um, even with 2,400 subscribers, whatever the number is, um, you got to still have a creative outlet um, because when you slip into not doing things that you like and shooting videos that you like or photographing things that you like and you're just doing it for straight business, uh, you're going to feel that burnout and you're going to feel um, all the stress that comes with running a business and then all those feelings of like, man, all I do is work and sure, I'm making great money and yes, I'm working with cameras, but I'm not really having fun. 
I thought that a lot of the things at the time that I was getting paid to do were, were fun, like you know, recording Steve Aoki at this event or recording Gary V or David Goggins. I'm like name dropping right now. Um, all of those things were fun, but I remember coming off those jobs just completely drained, completely wiped out. I would get sick for days. And although, although those things are cool and they're great portfolio builders, um, you know, shooting sports, that's fun too. That's still work and it's very stressful. So the way that I found out to balance it is by having – Exactly this, having a YouTube channel that in the end is for me, I regulate how often I shoot videos, how often I post, um, I regulate the content that I'm making. If I want to go uh, get real creative and go to the mountains and fly a drone and spend a weekend in like a different part of town and, and really focus on delivering a cool piece of content because I want to and because I think it's cool. That's very important. So remember, yes, there are people who will get into photography, videography, and they'll just they just want to make it a business, and that's it. And I guess they survive that way, and that's cool. But um, just remember to have some fun, um, and also say no to the opportunities and and no to the things that aren't fun uh, that you don't want to shoot because you don't have to say yes to every single job. So. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's just what I wanted to share as a uh, content marketer. Uh, just some tips and questions that I get asked a lot. Uh, you guys are welcome to reach out at andy at utahfilmsco.com if you guys have any additional questions or ideas for videos. Uh, this channel is, is set up for creator tips, YouTube tips, like business tips in that space. And then, of course, you guys will kind of see like the photography and the videography that I do as well. Um, check me out on my social media, most active on Instagram at Andy X Munoz, and I'll see you guys on the next video. If you guys want to, uh, check out some YouTube tips, I'll put a video right here. Or if you guys are here for like photography and you guys just want to chill and walk around and take photos with me, watch this video right here. Remember to subscribe. I'll see you guys later.